Hey golfers, Rob Cheney here from Golf Tech Singapore. In today's video, I'm going to discuss one of my favorite drills that I use on the lesson T on a daily basis. It's going to improve the sequencing and the structure of your golf swing. It's going to immediately improve your ball striking. What is it? It's the 90-90-90 drill. So this 90-90-90 drill is really a follow through position and drill that we're striving for and we're discussing how to move the body really into a specific place in order to sequence and synchronize the arms and the club and the body through the ball and all of this would be uh, with, the, with the goal of trying to improve the radius management, the contact and the consistency or the repeatability of the swing. So, what does this look like, this 90-90-90 drill? Well, it was first introduced to me by Andy Plummer many years ago when I first started my stack and tilt journey. And it's been a drill that I've used as myself as a player and one that I continue to use on a daily basis. I think it's a great place for so many golfers to go to, whether that be brand new golfers who have very little structure to their swing and it's all a little bit chaotic and doesn't really have much consistency. Having a place to stop or a def defined end to the swing can really help to build in that repeatability and consistency to their swing. But also for established golfers, as I say, I've used this drill myself. I use this drill myself repeatedly when my ball striking gets a little bit off. It's a little bit of an extension of the hit hard, stop quick drill that I like. And, and those of you that have watched my channel for any length of time will know that that's a, another favorite drill of mine. So this, for, this is really for everybody from new golfer to established golfer if you're looking to improve your ball striking. So let's discuss what this looks like 90-90-90, what we're referring to. Well really it's a position in the follow through where the right arm, the trail arm uh, and the club are more or less parallel to the ground and at that point in time my shoulders, my hips and my knees have turned through 90 degrees. That's where the 90-90-90 comes from. So we're looking at a particular point in time in the swing, a checkpoint, and trying to get that amount of turn, or at least somewhere close to that amount of turn, completed by that point. And a great way to start to understand this would be just to break down the follow through into what my three individual moves, which I think are really important if people struggle with the follow through. The three pieces that you need to have to achieve this 90-90-90 drill successfully is you need to have extension, which is the standing up piece of the swing. So now I'm upright, I'm not bent forwards anymore. Then the second part is to move my hips, my pelvis to the left. So that's putting this right tilt into my body, which I need in the follow through. So I stand up, I tilt to the right by virtue of moving my pelvis forwards. I do not tilt to the right by leaning back, just an important distinction there. So one more time, I stand up, extend, move my pelvis forward, I tilt, and then from this tilted position where I'm stood up, I now turn, rotate 90 degrees. So now I've reached this 90-90-90 position with my shoulders, my hips and my knees have more or less turned that corner by 90 degrees. And my arms and club are parallel to the target. That is a fantastic place to stop your swing if you're looking to add some structure and control to it, which ultimately should result in better ball striking because what this is essentially doing is it's helping to control the radius so the arms and the club are more stable, there's more structure to it. And as I'm stopping in this 90-90-90 position, what precedes that is much better sequencing of my body and my arms and the club. So by defining the finish position and being very specific about where I stop, I create much more predictable and consistent results before that, meaning impact becomes more repeatable. So to begin with, just try actually getting into that position. Okay, you do that with a club, you don't even have to hit a ball. 
Some ways you could even do it without a club. You could just start to learn the basic body movements if you're unfamiliar with them. But if you are familiar with them to an extent that you feel you can make practice swings and film yourself with this 90-90-90 finish where you stop with the trail arm and the club more or less parallel to the ground and the turns with the shoulders, the hips and the knees completed. And once you've done that a few times, you know, the drill, go ahead and hit some. Really paying attention to where you stop the swing. 90-90-90. Stand up, tilt, turn. Now hit shot, stopping in the same place. really nicely struck, really felt like I controlled the finish and it gives me a sense of, um, I don't know, more structure to my swing. It feels a little more, um, I suppose a little more forced in some ways um, and I sometimes get that feedback from students, it's like it's a little bit more rigid um, but for most of you, you need that. For most of you, for most of the people I see on a daily basis, they need that structure, they need that firmness, if you like, to their swing to give it some structure and repeatability, which without that feeling just doesn't exist. You know, people's golf is, most people's golf and ball striking is fleeting at best. It comes and goes, and most of the, t most of the time it goes. And the reason it goes is because when you're swinging through, rather than getting 90, 90, 90, you might be getting 50 or 60, 10, 10, really no rotation and therefore your arms are having to flex into the follow through to absorb the speed of the club and that's messing up the radius. So there's so many benefits to this 90-90-90 drill that you should be seeing if you're utilizing this exercise. Another really great way to use a 90-90-90 drill and it's a great place to start if you're not comfortable doing this at speed, but it's also a fantastic exercise to help people work on mid-range wedge shots, those sort of 30, 40, 50 yard shots around the green or those approach wedge shots which maybe aren't quite full swings. Swinging slower makes this exercise a little bit easier to do in the first instance, but also training this sequencing and this synergy between the body and the club, the body, the club and the arms, is a great way to learn these mid-distance pitch shots. So many people struggle with this shot because when they get a shot in front of them that is not a full shot, a lot of the time people are approaching that by simply sort of not moving their body and just trying to reduce the power by not moving their body and as a result it's getting a lot of flexing arms and limbs which again compromises the contact it gets really messy so an exceptional way to just train this 90-90-90 is to do it with a pitching wedge or a sand wedge hitting very very sh short shots to begin with the idea that as we move through the ball the torso the chest shoulders the hips my belt buckle are turning to face the target and this 90-90-90 position is a great place for you to hit these wedge shots from. So you can hit wedge shots just to A, build up your confidence to begin to do it faster later on with fuller swings and, and longer clubs. But as I say, this can work brilliantly if you struggle with these wedge shots that are not full shots, those sort of mid-distance wedge shots. So whatever length backswing you want, and then 90-90-90, is where you're going to stop in the follow through. There you go. Just controlling the strike, controlling the radius again, which is really controlling the strike, allowing that club to make good contact. But rather than this just being an arm swing, which can get very chaotic um, and clumsy, this is a swing where the body and the arms and the club and the pivot match. So 1990-90 has multiple applications. It isn't something that you just need to use as a practice drill. It's something that you can be using every single time you practice when you hit your wedge shots. And I think you'd all find 
that utilizing the concept and the feeling of 90-90-90 in your follow through would actually make a huge difference to your ball striking with all of your longer clubs as well. One final thing to add on 90-90-90 in that checkpoint on the front side of the swing, being through this exercise where I stand up and I tilt and I turn, as we look at this from the front view, which isn't always a, a view that you get to see a lot of, but one that I think is extremely important for this checkpoint, is notice how my trail arm is somewhat in and across my body, so it's angled 20 degrees inwards across my body. If you take a look at the grid on the mat here, the hand path grid here on the follow through, which is this line on the ground, is a really good reference for where that trail arm should be at the end of this drill. So if at the end of this drill you'd stop and you see how my arm now is much more straight out in front of me and almost mirroring the target line, that would be a sign that I'm swinging too much out to the right, too into out, hooks and sort of struggle with blocks and hooks with that swing. And at the same time, if you're stopping 90-90-90 with your arm, your trail arm much more across your body at this point in time, that would signify greater out to in swing path, which would be tendency for pulls and slices. So this is why you know, I'm such a big fan of this exercise because you can be very strict and clear and very defined about where you're trying to stop. All right? Stand up, tilt, turn. 90, 90, 90, 90 degrees of turn. I'm tilted to the right, which is correct. My arm and hands are slightly inwards. They haven't swung straight down the target line. They're tracing the grid or tracing the arc of the swing like this. Now I know that if I was able to hit balls and stop here with some degree of consistency, I'm gonna build that consistency into my ball striking. So give that drill a go, 90, 90, 90. It's one of my favorites and I think you'll really enjoy it too. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. There is so much value to learning the finish of the golf swing. Um, it's one thing actually that I think connects many, many good or even great players together. There's often a lot of talk about how you know, swings are unique and everyone is so different. But I've posted over time and certainly over recent weeks, lots of pictures of great players, both from present day and from history demonstrating these follow through positions, this 90-90-90 concept. It's something that glues together many, many great players, many great ball strikers demonstrate these pieces. And equally, I see every day on the lesson tee, people who don't do this and who struggle to play golf and make good contact really struggle with these basic movements on the follow through in terms of how they move. So for me, the value of this exercise can't be overstated. It's, it's, it's hugely beneficial for everyone that uses it from brand new golfer learning some structure to their swing and understanding how to do the follow through. And as I say, for my own game as a decent player and someone who can hit the ball pretty well, this helps me to just get back to that feeling of solid contact when I start to lose the sequencing and the, the pieces in my swing. When something starts to go awry, 90, 90, 90 can give that back to me and to you very, very quickly. Hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions about the video, do get down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you if you're using the 90, 90, 90 drill or a version of it, and if it's helped your game or the ways that you've utilized it in your practice. For me, as I say, it's more than just a, a, a one-off or, or a, you know, a very, periodic practice piece. It's something you could use long term and as I touched on in the video, especially with those distance wedges. So give it a go. If you, if you do try it and you have some success with it, get down in the comments and let me know how you got on. Guys, thanks as always for sticking with me till the end. If you enjoyed it, click that thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more golf related content. And if you're not already following me on my other social media channels, please feel free to go and look me up on Instagram or Twitter. Until next time, guys, have a great week. I hope you get to play some golf. Stay safe, and I'll see you again soon for another video.